Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. In the news and business reports, we often heard some economists, business analysts, and politicians claim the rich get richer and the poor become poorer. Some of you could wonder how they get this conclusion or what it is based on. The Gini coefficient, or Gini index, developed by the Italian statistician Corrado Gini in 1912, is one of the most popular metrics to measure income distribution across a population. So how to understand the Gini index? How it is calculated? What is the Gini index of the world? What are its advantages and limitations? In the video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. Understand the Gini index. The Gini coefficient ranges from 0 to 1, with 0 representing perfect equality and 1 representing perfect inequality. A country in which every resident has the same income would have an income Gini coefficient of 0. Conversely, a country in which one resident earned all the income, while everyone else earned nothing, would have an income Gini coefficient of 1. Although there are no internationally defined standard cutoff values, it's commonly recognized that the Gini index less than 0.2 corresponds with perfect income equality. 0.2 to 0.3 corresponds with relative equality. 0.3 to 0.4 corresponds with a relatively reasonable income gap. 0.4 to 0.5 corresponds with high income disparity. Above 0.5 corresponds with severe income disparity. Section 2. How the Gini Index is Calculated. The Gini coefficient is derived from the Lorenz Curve, a graphical depiction of societal inequality which was published by Max Lorenz, an American economist, in 1905. A Lorenz Curve is generated by plotting the cumulative population income on a vertical axis and population percentile on the horizontal axis. To explain, each percentile is plotted on the graph with a line situated at 45 degrees. This line represents perfect equality. Under perfect equality, the bottom 10% of the population receives 10% of income, whilst the top 10% also receives 10% of income. However, in the real world, the percentiles are populated below the line of equality, creating what is known as the Lorenz curve. The reason the curve is situated below is that a situation cannot exist whereby the bottom 50% receive more than 50% of income. If they did, then they wouldn't be in the bottom 50%. Once each percentile has been placed onto the graph, we are left with the curve. The area between the curve and the line of equality is then used to calculate the Gini coefficient. The area above the Lorenz curve and towards the line of equality is referred to as area A, and the area below the Lorenz curve as area B. This can be seen in the chart below. The Gini coefficient formula is calculated using area A divided by the sum of area A and B. To calculate the Gini coefficient, we must first measure the area of B. We can do this by splitting each segment into triangles and squares. Let us take a simple example below. If we split it down, we can create three segments illustrated below. Area 1 equals 50 times 25 times 0.5 equals 625. Area 2 equals 50 times 25 equals 1250. Area 3 equals 50 times 75 times 0.5 equals 1875. So the total area of B equals the combined total of the three areas. This equals 625 plus 1250 plus 1875 equals 3750. The area of B is therefore 3750. We can then work out the area of A. The line of equality can be calculated by using the total area of the triangle. This equals 100 times 100 times 0.5. In turn, we get 5000 as our figure. So this is the total area of the triangle, which includes both A and B. We already have the area of B, 3750, so the area of A is the difference, 1250. We can now plug those figures into the formula. Gini coefficient equals 1250, divided by 1250 plus 3750 equals 0.25. From the formula, we can tell that the larger the area A, the higher the Gini index, which refers to a country that has a higher level of income or wealth inequality. Section 3. The Gini Index Around the World. The Gini coefficient experienced sustained growth during the 19th and 20th centuries. In 1820, the global Gini coefficient stood at 0.5, while in 1980 and 1992, the figure was 0.657. COVID-19 is likely to have a further negative impact on income equality. Economists believe COVID-19 triggered an annual 1.2 to 1.9 percentage point increase in the Gini coefficient for 2020 and 2021. 
To give you a better understanding, here is the Gini Index of the world's 10 largest economies. As you can see, most of these countries' Gini coefficients range between 0.3 and 0.4. In addition, here are the top 10 countries with the highest and lowest Gini coefficients. Section 4. Advantages. The Gini coefficient has the following advantages. Number 1. It is a measure of inequality through ratio analysis rather than a variable unrepresentative of most of the population, such as income per capita or gross domestic product. Number 2. It can be used to compare income distributions across different population sectors and countries. For example, the Gini coefficient for urban areas differs from that of rural areas in many countries. Number 3. It can be used to indicate how the distribution of income has changed within a country over a period of time, thus it is possible to see if inequality is increasing or decreasing. For example, from 1991 to 2019, the Gini index in the US had grown from 0.38 to 0.415. It means the income gap between the rich and the poor is getting bigger in the United States. Section 5. Limitations. Despite its numerous advantages, there are still some limitations to the Gini coefficient. 1. Sample bias. The validity of Gini coefficient calculations can be dependent on the size of a sample. For example, small countries or countries with less economic diversity frequently tend to show low coefficients, while large economically diverse countries usually demonstrate high coefficients. 2. Data inaccuracy. Inaccurate data can distort the validity of the coefficient. For example, shadow economies and informal economic activity are present in every country and could represent a larger portion of true economic production in developing countries and at the lower end of the income distribution within countries. In both cases, this means that the Gini index of measured incomes will overstate true income inequality. 3. Same Gini coefficient, but different income distribution. In some cases, the coefficient can be the same for countries with different income distributions because it only calculates the ratio between area A and B, but obscures the shape of the Lorenz curve. 4. Same Gini coefficient, but different income level. A high-income country and a low-income one can have the same Gini coefficient as long as their incomes are distributed similarly. For instance, Turkey and the US both have income Gini coefficients despite Turkey's vastly lower GDP per capita. Section 6. Summary. Now, let's do a quick review of today's topic. The Gini coefficient, or Gini index, is one of the most popular metrics to measure income distribution across a population. It ranges from 0 to 1, with 0 representing perfect equality and 1 representing perfect inequality. Although there are no internationally defined standard cutoff values, it's commonly recognized that if the Gini index of a country is above 0.4, it typically corresponds with high income disparity. The advantages of the Gini index included as a measure of inequality through ratio analysis. It can be used to compare income distributions across different population sectors and countries, and it can be used to indicate how the distribution of income has changed within a country over a period of time. However, it also suffers from limitations such as sample bias and data inaccuracy. In addition, countries with the same Gini index could have different levels of income and distribution. All right, that's all for today's topic. So, what do you think about the Gini Index? Do you have questions? Please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.